Hey guys, it's Rav with 203 tips and tricks you need to know when playing DayZ in 2023. And I guarantee you, you won't know all of these. In fact, I'm so confident I want to challenge you to click that button down here. And if by the end of the video you haven't learned anything new, you can unclick that button. I think that's pretty fair because I'm about to blow your mind with these tips and tricks. Number one, during thunderstorms, the sound of thunder is client side. So no, you sadly can't mask the sound of shots and footsteps with thunder. However, you should take advantage of the rainfall to mask footsteps. But do remember the environmental sounds are reduced for players within buildings. This works even better with infected. During storms, they have reduced hearing and visibility, making you almost invisible. Infected are actually really sensitive to sound, so crouch or crawl when in their vicinity to reduce the chances of them spotting you. And don't use in-game chat, they pick up on this. There are three different settings for a player's voice volume, whispering, standard and yelling, but don't be mistaken, they control the range, they can be heard not how loud you are. A whisper can be heard from 7 meters, with the default volume having a range of 25, and a yell an impressive 45 meters. It's common knowledge you can build walls with a hatchet or hammer, but did you know a meat tenderizer works just as well, and best of all, unlike a hammer or hatchet, it's completely silent. While on the subject of base building, you don't need a shovel or pickaxe to construct a fence post. Farm and hoe actually works just as well. A field shovel also works, although these currently don't spawn on vanilla, even though the animations seem to be working perfectly fine. Bus stations are one of the most underrated loot spots in the game for essentials. There's just so many goodies. It's quicker to drop and roll under these concrete walls than to vault or crawl. If there's no room in your inventory, put room within a container in your inventory and you double click on an item on the ground, it'll go straight into that container. Duct tape is the most versatile and useful item in the game, always pick it up. It can be used to repair clothes, restrain players and most importantly, craft that OP improvised suppressor by combining it with a water bottle. The improvised suppressor can go on nearly any weapon as long as it has a suppressor slot. Sadly, you can't use duct tape to gag people, however, you can use a rag to gag other players. This will muffle their voice, much like how wearing a helmet does. You can only gag other players if you have one rag in your hand, multiple rags won't work. You can even gag yourself for an emergency storage rag, or to muffle the sound of any unwanted character noises such as sneezes or the cannibal laugh. Do keep in mind when turning a disinfected rag into a gag, it will lose its disinfected status. If you restrain a player with a metal wire, they'll cut themselves when struggling out. However, this does not apply if another player frees them. You can use your hands to free any player from restraints, even handcuffs. However, if you use a tool, it's much faster. Each type of restraint requires a different set of tools. For example, sharp objects can cut through rope and tape, but not handcuffs or wire, whereas a lockpick or key can be used on the handcuffs. The best tool is a hacksaw, which can cut through any restraint. You can turn a barbed wire into wire with pliers. You can disarm a bear trap with a stick. You can safely disarm a landmine with a lockpick knife or screwdriver, which is basically a knife being able to open items, skin animals and perform stealth kills. In fact, a screwdriver is actually better as you can use it to gather small stones from rocks where you can't with a knife. You can also do this with a wrench and pipe wrench. A sledgehammer, pickaxe and hammer can be used to collect bigger stones from rocks. These are used in the crafting of furnaces and flagpoles. When travelling, try to carry a spark plug. It's one of the smallest and lightest items in the game, however, could just bag you a free car, as it's common for players to only remove their spark plug from their functional cars as they assume other players won't carry one. Nails are one of the most valuable items in the game. Even if you don't plan to build a base, they are a wonderful bartering item. They can also be combined with a baseball bat to create a nailed bat. Alternatively, you can use barbed wire to get a barbed wire bat. It even reads no exceptions, a reference to the weapon in The Walking Dead. You can sharpen a stone on a rock to make a knife. The same can be done with a pile of bones. These can then be combined with a long stick to make a spear, a great weapon for dealing with infected. If the improvised stone or bone knife is about to break, you can turn it into a pristine spear. This is especially useful when raiding with melee weapons. Did you know you can raid with your fists, taking 4008 hits to destroy both a wooden wall and frame? Do keep in mind though, punching a wall or any surface will eventually cause your hands to bleed. To prevent this, you can wear gloves, but the gloves will take damage. This is even true when punching zombies. In fact, anything you're holding will take damage, even melee weapons weapons and once ruined it'll drop to the floor. The best bullets to raid with in Daisy are slugs, 308 Winchester and 7.62 by 54 as they do the most damage to walls, but the AKM with a drum mag shooting 7.62 by 39 is the quickest gun to raid with in Daisy due to its high fire rate and magazine capacity. 
When raiding with explosives, you can take advantage of splash damage to break multiple walls at once. Plastic explosives deal so much splash damage that they break the wooden frame behind a wall before a metal plate. You can make an IED out of a protector case. You can activate this with either a detonator or alarm clock. The detonator has a range of 100 meters. The backpack slot, jacket slot, feet slot and shoulder slot all determine how loud your character is when moving. A fire must have a headspace of 5 meters to be lit indoors, however you can still light them in these small sheds. You can blow on a recently extinguished fire to relight it as long as you have some new kindling. Wearing an armband even as a solo is a great way to give the illusion of a group of you. You can also cut it up to double as an emergency bandage, although wearing a bandana is best for this, being able to directly apply it as a bandage. You could even use a sewing kit to bandage but I highly recommend disinfecting it to prevent wound infection. Be aware of the direction of the sun during firefights, a sun glare can be the difference between life or death. Alternatively, you can wear sunglasses to prevent sun glare, although they do tint your vision. And yeah, aviators still make you 100 times cooler. Fruit, mushrooms and small stones will only spawn if a player is within 100 meters. A build up of these means someone is or has recently been in the area for a while. I often find bases within these areas. Trees shelter you from rain as well as cars and tents. Don't wear grenades on your vest, if they're shot they will explode. All items including explosives will take damage when shot in containers or your pockets, however they will receive less damage in your backpack. Place items, especially explosives as they explode when ruined, within containers inside of your inventory and they will not take any damage. You can place explosives in a fire and they will eventually explode. The same can be said for flashbangs. Grenades can wallbang people through wood. Placing items in a full cooking pot will cause them to become wet. You can kill a player with an M79 grenade launcher using the smoke grenade shells, although it's rather inaccurate. You can also kill a player with a flare gun that's incredibly weak. Rather than building a fire, you can actually place kindling on the ground and just ignite it. Eating only when your food is yellow will make it last twice as long, but food decays twice as quick in a player's inventory. Learn to balance this as food can't rot in your stomach. You can open a can of food with nearly every tool in DayZ, with the bigger, more industrial tools resulting in you getting less food. To receive 100% of food, you must open a can with a can opener. Both the paramedic jacket and paramedic pants found in hospital locations are very underrated. These are great starting gear as they are warm and their storage space is huge. They even come in green too. You can repair NPC gear with duct tape, however badly damaged NPC gear works just as good as pristine ones. There are two different types of toxic zones, static ones which don't move and are always at Riffy and Pablovo, then the dynamic ones which will randomly strike any town in the game. You should probably subscribe to this Rav Plays guy, he's half decent. You can only find the VSS, Svel and Gas shells at static zones, the POX vials on the other hand can only be found in dynamic zones. Once thrown, these will explode on impact, and yes, they can do damage through walls. You can make an improvised filter out of a plastic bottle, dust mask and charcoal tabs. Charcoal tabs can be used to refill the filter. An improvised filter will last around 5 minutes in a contamination zone, whereas a normal filter will last about 8 minutes. However, the combat gas mask will last an entire 15 minutes. The combat gas mask has a unique 30% resistance to bleeding ability. You can repair bandages with a sewing kit. As long as it's under half the stack, you can combine badly damaged ammo with pristine ammo to improve its condition. MVG goggles will only spawn at helicopter crash sites and military convoys. You need a punch card to get access to the underground bunker on Livonia, and you can actually get these from the zombie officers at convoys. Learn the importance of inventory management. Heavy, less important items in your backpack, as you can always drop this in a firefight for extra stamina. Alternatively, you can pop an EpiPen, which will briefly give you unlimited stamina. This also allows you to hold your breath for extended periods of time, perfect when sniping. A backpack can last 4-8 to eight hours on the ground without any interaction. This means you can create effective temporary stashes. When knocked unconscious, you'll drop the item you're holding and in a firefight, this is usually your weapon. You can't be hit by infected wolves or bears when sat in a car. If you exit a car when in gear, it will stall. However, leave it in neutral and the engine will stay on. Jumping out of a car at any speed will nearly always kill you. Blowtorch can be used to repair parts of cars. The glow stick is the most underrated item in DayZ. Place these at angles when camping a building so that you can see the shadow of any pushing players. Turn a weapon flashlight on and place it on your back and the light will be directly in front of you. The higher your food stats, the more immune you are to diseases. You can also take multivitamins to boost your immune system. This is very useful when your squad mates have a cold. Do not share food or water containers with sick players as this can transfer the illness. If a buddy asks you for some water, it's normally best just to let him keep the entire bottle. A landmine can be placed under a car and will only explode once a player gets in it. 
This does not work with bear traps, however if a player drives over a trap it will ruin the wheel. Cars will trigger tripwire traps. It takes 3 bear traps to kill a bear, 1 bear trap to kill a wolf and will only break the legs of a player or infected. You can't actually swim with a broken leg. You can sort the barrel off a blaze at Mosin at BK-18, both the double and single barrel shotguns as well as the magnum. A sword off weapon will have twice the recoil. You can also sort the iron sights off the famas. If you ever find yourself in need of shoes or gloves, improvised rag clothes can be a great solution. You are 15 times less likely to cut your feet when walking barefoot on grass over concrete. You can damage locked doors to open them. You can cut up most clothes into rags. You can then combine 12 to make improvised rope. Gas stoves, generators, cars and torches and obviously fires will all warm you up. You can get the heat buff the quickest at an open fire. The heat buff will temporarily make it impossible for you to get cold. You can wring out clothes to dry them or sit near a heat source. However, clothes dry the quickest if you take them off and place them next to a fire. You can add fat or gasoline to a torch to increase its lifespan. All power lines eventually lead to towns. You can distract infected by throwing an item. You can also do the same with wolves and as seen in my myth busting series it doesn't have to be meat. Wolves won't attack you over water or outside of the map. You can use an alarm clock to un wolves and infected. Laying down in a building or hiding out of sight will eventually make infected lose interest. Extra loot spawns on top of dynamic train crashes. An alarm clock will display the server time. So does a clock on the town hall in Cherno. You can hit infected through windows with longer melee weapons. This helmet can be used as a melee weapon, although it only spawns at this castle on the east side of Livonia. Epoxy putty can be used to repair plate carriers and helmets. Flies form around bodies after 10 minutes, and after 20 minutes, the skin will start to decay. Suppressors and bayonets increase the weapon length, making it harder to aim out of weapons. Try taking them off. You can repair weapon attachments without removing them from the weapon. An electrical repair kit can be used to fix scopes. You can hold an optic in your hand as an improvised binocular. Don't eat with bloody hands, you will get ill. And if your friend has bloody hands, you can feed them so that they don't get ill. You can light brooms on fire. You can use a knife to get seeds from vegetables. You can bury a crate under a chopped down tree and upon server restart, the tree will regrow. You can cook food without fat or water, but it will lose some nutritional value. Removing a car radiator empties all the water. The off-road is the only car where you have to adjust the seats to get in the back. The Sarka is the only car with an engine in the back. When spawning in, you'll always face north. Infected despawn after 6 minutes if no one is in the area. You can use dead infected to determine if a player is in the area. Do keep in mind though, wolves will also attack infected. A pro tip is to bury infected if you plan to stay in the area for a while. You can also bury player bodies, but cutting it up has the same effect. If a bandage is damaged, it will lose its disinfected status. Bandaging with a bandage that hasn't been disinfected may cause the wound infection disease. You can attack infected on top of cars or similar objects while being out of reach of them. You can shave your beard. This doesn't give you an advantage, but you do get an achievement. Depending on what cut you and where you were cut determines how much blood you lose. A landmine always knocks a player out for 50 seconds. Fishing during the morning hours are more effective. You can't vault if you have less than 20% stamina. You can't carry heavy items with a broken leg. And the only way to cure Kubi is a bullet to the brain. I want to say thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. And if you did find it useful, all I ask for is a like. And if you want to see more of this stuff, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps me out. What tip surprised you the most? 